no, nothing down here. I'm always worried that, and I do think we, we all, I mean, some of the other guides might not like me saying this, but I think we all miss tracks. James, I think, would possibly agree with me, um, because I, it's difficult to drive and spot the tracks, especially if it's not on a clear substrate, um, or a soft substrate rather, then it, the track isn't as clear. So we do try and check very carefully, but I do think we miss a lot of tracks. And that's the benefit of driving around and working with a tracker because up front there you can see a lot better and you can see the ground clearer. Okay, oh, thank you. I just got an update from James. Sounds like we have a surprise. Oh, I'm far from that area, unfortunately. Ah, that's frustrating. It sounds like, okay, I'll tell you because um, it sounds like there's possibly a wild dog heading in this direction onto, onto Vuyatela or onto Juma, but right on the other side of the property. Now, I'm far from there and I've got a long little windy road to get through. So it doesn't, it sounds like I haven't crossed yet, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to try to head across there and see. I'm just listening to the radio while I'm driving, trying to get an update from these other guides. But we are very far, it's, let's just listen and, and for a little bit. Oh dear, so... Sounds like around in pile of planes. Um, let me just, I'm just going to jump on the radio quickly. Let them know I'm also going to head into the area. So, uh, just a few of the other guides. As soon as. So what happens is as soon as a sighting like this happens, the guides all jump on the radio and see who can move into an area, um, who's closest. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be able to get through there. Go ahead James, go ahead. very quickly. Hello, we are racing, we are racing, as you can see, long time no chat to. Um, we are charging towards wild dogs. I just went to one of the Chitwa guides now. I bumped into him on our way back from Cheetah Plains. And he says that they are moving quite quickly and they are moving east. So I think Byron's going along the power lines road. I think we need to check a little bit further east of that, in fact. So I'm going to go... I think I'm going to jump onto Philemon's cut line. And I'm going to go along there, see if I can scan, and then maybe go on to quarantine, because I'm wondering if they're going to come this way, and then go down Voyatella Access. And hopefully we'll catch them like that. But I am driving quickly at the moment. Because when you need to go, well, when you're going to a wild dog sighting, that's the only way to get there, is quickly. Because if you're not careful, you can lose them. So we're just about passing Shibamu now. And then hopefully after that, we will get them. I don't know which pack it is. I haven't heard anything uh, from the guides. I, I literally just stopped for two seconds to find out where they went in. That's the most important thing. How many there are doesn't quite matter just yet. Because what we're hoping to do is, of course, put them on camera for you this morning. It is cold. It is miserable. It started raining quite heavily on Cheetah Plains. So myself and Craig made a duck uh, before we got too wet. And I think that we might have the rest of the day like this, which is a little bit sad because I was enjoying the nice warm weather that we were having. Okay, our turn off is coming up shortly. We're not too far away now. And hopefully we're going to get them.
I'm going, you might hear a lot of wind, of course, but that's because we're driving at the speed of light. Woo! Right. Where's this road? Where's this road? No, that's a mitre drain. That's not what we want to go down. It's like somebody has already gone down there, though. Dodge all the corrugations. Handbrake turn, Craig, are you ready? No, I'm just joking. We're not going to do a handbrake turn. I don't think I've ever done a handbrake turn in my life. But I'd like to one day on a racetrack. I think that could be lots of fun. Whoop, whoop. Oh, off we go. Unfortunately, I didn't pick up not one sign of the leopard cubs either. I haven't seen any of their tracks, which is no good. Oh, I'm just listening to the radio. I wonder if Byron's got those dogs. Not sure. Maybe. No, he hasn't. Okay, Megan's just said he hasn't got them just yet. What do you think, Craig? Bullet wants cut like Okay, let's go Zoe's. We'll go on to Zoe's then. We'll check it out here. So we're not actually too far. As the crow flies, we're not far away at all. But because a lot of these roads don't just go straight through the bush, it means that we have to sort of meander around and it can take a little bit longer. And I haven't driven down here this morning, so I will keep my eyes out to see if I can see any cat tracks. And I'll check some of the bigger trees here, just to make sure that there isn't a leopard of anything, perhaps laying along one. Oh, and I've also forgot to tell you, as we're racing on to chase after wild dogs, I went past Gwen's Den. I'm going to have a look to see if my favourite warthog uh, was there sleeping in his burrow. He was not, so I wonder if he hasn't changed burrow. Something is living in there though, because there's a fresh track, and even after the rain you could still see that something had been walking in and out. I didn't get out to go and have a look in case there was still something inside of that den and it came charging out towards me. I wouldn't want that. And so it'll be nice to try and figure out where my favourite warthog is now sleeping. But I'm sure he'll come back to that burrow eventually. It's such a good one. It looks like it's quite big. I'd imagine it's the equivalent of a four-bedroom home. It's very spacious, all open plan. It's quite lovely. Okay, over the elephants have been digging in the road, making all sorts of mess for us. Now, Craig, have you got your eyes open? Are you looking for a flash of white? I know I am. That's what we're looking for at the moment is that you might not see the dogs because the grass is quite tall but when they run they sort of bounce, you all know that, that bounce that they do and you'll see that white tail sticking up, that, that flat, uh, flat coloration, that flash coloration. Alright, I know all of you are very excited. Now Christina, you're wondering if there is a speed limit, yes, with the exception of wild dogs. <laughs> You can ask any guide in the Sabi Sand. We are very good at following the speed limits. We don't go too quickly normally. That's an impala running around here. And uh, so typically you, you don't want to be going more than about 25 kilometers an hour. But like I said, wild dogs are an exception because if you were to drive at that speed, you would see them for a whole of two seconds and then they'd be lost and you wouldn't be able to catch up with them again. So it's always good to be careful. And um, so when you are driving, we look around quite a bit. And we never really go, even though it seems like we're going crazy fast, we're not going more than about 35 kilometers an hour. I'd say an absolute maximum 40 kilometers an hour, but it's very difficult to go that quickly on these roads. So you don't want to, you don't want to do anything like that. And um, so, so yeah, so you're just driving about like now, the speed that I'm going, I'm probably only going about 15 k's an hour, 15 kilometers an hour, which is not very fast. But to you, as you're sitting watching this and watching the vegetation, speed past you it might look like I'm, I'm warping through everything but don't worry I'm not I don't want to hit an animal uh, that I think is the guides thing that they want to keep off of their list and it is very very easy because you see roadkill all over the world and I was in Australia I saw so many wombats and foxes I know foxes are not indigenous uh, there were lots of foxes lots of uh, little kangaroos and things all lying on the side of the road and we get the same thing in South Africa I've seen dead vultures I've seen lots of dead animals. I've seen even sometimes in the Kruger National Park people are speeding and that is normally watched very carefully the speed limit in the Kruger. Dead cheetah, I've, come, I've seen a dead lion on the side of the road which had been hit by a big truck so these things do happen so you do have to be very careful so you won't find the guides going very fast with the exception of course wild dogs like I said but then you're cautious you make sure that you're not doing anything too silly. 
hearing mongoose squeaking every now and then, but I don't think that's at us. <laughs> so it's a race against time at the moment to try and figure out where exactly they cross. Byron and I are both doing a team effort and hopefully we'll get lucky, but he's also driving really fast. Let's go across to him. I am indeed Taylor. I think I got an update that they're going down Zoe they're going down Zoe's Road towards Impala Plains. So I'm on Philemon's cut line now. This obviously means absolutely nothing to any of you, but <laughs> just to give you an idea how we trying to learn that and get to an area quite quickly. Now I've got the roof on so that also doesn't make us very aerodynamic. This is not ideal. The flaps are flapping behind us. Very exciting. Seen wild dog here for quite some time. Well I haven't. Let's see. Uh, hopefully, hopefully. Taylor, uh, apparently if you head down towards Solomon's uh, cut line at the moment, I'm almost there. Just giving Taylor an update. I think she missed the other one earlier while she was live. I'm doing some serious multitasking now, listening to Megan, listening to Taylor, and trying to drive, learn, the, get, get to the right road. This is very exciting. This is great. And you never know, sometimes following wild dogs, because they run so erratically and all over the show, they often flush out other predators like leopards. Uh, many times before I've followed wild dogs to the tree because the wild dogs are running past. Alright, well let's quickly head back to Taylor and see if she's any closer than I am. Well, I'm just seeing Aubrey and I just want to have a chat to Aubrey. Orbs, I've just come from Impala Plains. Loot. Uh, okay, do they still have visual of them? Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, you go ahead. I've just come from there. I'm going to go around on the main road, okay? So, sorry everyone, I was just chatting to Aubrey. I couldn't get hold of him on the radio. Uh, so we're just trying to make a plan. We've just, we were just on, Im on Impala Plains Road and I didn't see anything there. So what we're gonna do is I think we're gonna go all the way to the cut line, see exactly where they've crossed in. And then I think that way we'll have a better chance. So there's the Balanites tree. We're just gonna go back the way we came very quickly. And the problem with wild dogs is, of course is that they don't just go in one direction they do this they turn around go back the way that they've just came and and that's of course if they're picking up different scents of animals and they want to be hunting on a day like today because there's a bit of wind which can work to their advantage let's see and this is quite nice also as I'm just we're just scanning through the bushes of course we still got the roof on so you'll see that it doesn't look like there is anything down there Who's gonna win? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, I've just come from him. Oh, hang on. We just we just trying to we trying to see as check as all we got them. Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna. He hasn't he hasn't seen them. I've just come from Impala Plains. They're not there. I'm gonna go all the way along Gary Main and see where they've crossed exactly. I'll see you now. There we go. So team effort. Uh, this is the. Probably the best thing to do is to chat constantly, keep in contact with the other guides. Because they move so quickly, like with a lot of the different animals out here, it's like when we do searching for leopards and things like that. It's easier if you all have a plan, you all check an area and you do an army sweep. 
because that way uh, you've got a better chance of finding them and even though we keep passing each other and driving the same roads that doesn't matter at all um, that's fine we're triple checking quadruple checking going over where the elephants are digging again <laughs> And then this way, I'm really hoping that our teamwork is going to pay off. This is my favorite. This is always lots of fun. High action, driving fast, adrenaline is pumping. Are we going to see these dogs? What do you think, Craig? Do you think we're going to get them? Uh, Craig is positive. He's excited. He said he, he wants to find them before Byron gets them. So that is our challenge this morning. <laughs> <laughs> We're both, both Byron and I and Craig. I don't know how competitive Senzo is just yet, but we're all pretty competitive, so it's always a race against time uh, to see who gets them first. And of course, it's just for, it's just fun. It's nothing serious. If you saw how we acted in camp, you would laugh at us. We're all like a big family that are brothers and sisters. With the amounting, amount of teasing that goes on in camp, it's above average, I would say, in any working environment. But it's what keeps us sane, and I think it's what gives us such a good work relationship with with one another so that's really nice okay are we gonna do we almost that guy remain again <laughs> this is so much fun okay let's check down no nothing on Philemon's cut line yet I feel like I'm a chameleon or oh, something searching looking around for all sorts of things Now, Adele, you're wondering if the wild dogs have certain territories or do they just go all over? They sort of do a little bit of both. You will see them marking. You'll see the, the males urinating and then they'll often defecate. And, of course, those two ways are territorial markings. But because dogs cover such a massive piece of ground, unless they're denning, they might not have a permanent territory, if that makes sense. But if they've got, uh, they've got a den site, a big termite mound, that's where they're going to be going every single night until the young pups are Big enough and I can actually start moving around. A lot of vehicle activity here, lots of turning around, circles, someone might have been doing donuts here, so I wonder if we're not perhaps getting warmer as to where those dogs had crossed in. We are about to hit triple M is just up here. So I'm just keeping my eye on the ground. I haven't seen any tracks crossing out just yet. I don't know which pack it is, I can't tell you how many it is. But for example, the sand pack is pretty spectacular. The sand pack I've seen down and yeah, they, where are they here? Oh, okay, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna quickly have a chat to these guys and hopefully they're gonna let us know where the dogs are. Let's go back across to Byron. All right, we're just into this Impala Plains area now. No sign just yet of these dogs anywhere. Just checking around to see if I see tracks, but I'm going to head a little bit further north. Taylor's checking the southern side and the boundary. So I'm not sure where they would have gone, but what I'm doing is I'm heading to the clearings. So this Impala Plains area is a lovely clearing, and then further up there's a nice clearing, and then I'm going to head back around towards the quarantine area, those clearings, because these wild dogs often know their territories very well and they prefer hunting. They'll hunt anywhere, but it's nice for them to get out into a clearing and hunt around there. They'll often see their prey a lot easier and then run them down. Sorry, hold on a second. I'm just trying to listen to the update. Taylor, go again with that, please. Okay, I'm not sure where, which direction now. No one. And you see the thing is with wild dog unless you've got somebody following them and staying with them it's very difficult to pick up where they can give you an exact direction Aubrey I've come from Impala Plains I'm heading north um, I wasn't sure which direction they are heading in
Okay, copy. I'm going to come back around and check through quarantine and then head back down that way. See, because they were saying they headed east. Now, the thing is, what the wild dogs do is they don't necessarily pick one direction and go. They'll move around looking for food. Um, or potential prey that they might feed on. So it is difficult. I mean, it's also a little bit of a needle in a haystack. It's luck of the draw, trying to work out which direction they're going. But this is fun. <laughs> now, you've got to be so careful when you're following wild dogs, because as soon as they run off-road, and I've seen this a number of times, wild dogs are the biggest source of broken vehicles in compared to any other animal. They've got some red crested Korans, a pair of red crested Korans, that's very nice. And the reason for that is because these guides, guides in general drive and um, and they try and keep up with the wild dogs and you can't drive fast off road because they're branches, they're holes, they're rocks, you've got to be so careful. And often vehicles break because they hit something, they see the long grass while they're trying to keep up with wild dogs. We're going to have to scan these areas area, um, carefully, check these clearings, nice open open area. We should see the wild dog bounding through the long grass if they are around here. Let's go to Taylor and find out where she is. We're on Weaver's Nest. I almost forgot where we are. We're going along Weaver's Nest now. I don't know where the dogs are, but I'm also looking on road to see if their footprints have crossed over. No, those were impala tracks. And I'm listening out for any alarm calls as we bumble about too. So this way, I've decided to come a little bit further, sort of more south and more east. Because if they are coming this way, it would be great to intercept them instead of getting stuck behind them. Uh, so hopefully this way we'll actually get them just coming towards us. But again, no one has seen them just yet. This is just, we're trying to gauge where they've come from, from the other guides. So that's, I wonder if we should, I think we need to go towards Treehouse Dam. Let's do that. I just have a feeling they've come through here quite a few times actually and that's not too far away from the areas we've been tracking let's try it I'm just gonna put foot a little bit just as we bumble through here maybe we're gonna get lucky remember the one I think it was a TV show where we had wild dogs and giraffe all in the same sighting Brent had a very lucky day maybe we're going to get something similar this morning who knows Hmm, where are you? Now Daniel from Scotland, you're wondering if the closest relative to wild dog is perhaps a wolf? I would say so. I, I would say that they, that's where they must have come from. Them, dingoes, all those types of animals. Actually, you know what? I took a picture the other day when I was in Australia. I was at a, um, like a sanctuary. Forgotten what it's called now. And we have, well, we're here, there's no wild dogs at Treehouse Dam just yet. And maybe we'll just have a little listen in a moment. And they had this whole thing about where the dingoes had sort of started from and how they ended up being dingoes. So I'll need to have a look for that picture again because I think they had African wild dogs on there too, which would be quite interesting. Now there's nothing here. There's no alarm calls. Of anything not even a bird chirping at the moment I don't think we're in the right spot I don't think that we're checking the right areas unfortunately and this is always a tough thing is that if you didn't see the animal for yourself 
you know not everybody knows the, this property very well especially the guides that don't traverse on here so they could be doing their absolute best to try and give us where they think that they went in but they might not know the road so they could be saying Impala Plains but actually they crossed all the way down near the gate or even further as sort of south or west so this is the hard thing because I haven't seen any wild dog tracks yet the only thing I did see when I went to the, the junction of Triple M and Gowrie Main of course was some leopard tracks some female leopard tracks who I suspect were shadows but it looks like somebody had already checked them from earlier this morning and I don't know where they went exactly so if we don't come right here we might go and quickly see if we can follow up on those leopard tracks if they all haven't been squashed now as everyone's racing around searching for wild dogs. Maybe we're going to have to go down towards the gate and just do the whole of Vuyatela access again and start weaving around there. They also do that the one day they, they crossed in at a similar point then they went towards Sydney's dam and they came back again and they spent most of the morning racing around on our Traverse. It was the last time that I saw the wild dogs and we had that amazing sighting. Remember we had that really funny one where one of the dogs, they were all playing very play and came running in on the road and slid on its face. That was quite funny. <laughs> if any of you remember those. That was quite cool. They were all dancing. They were, they were doing a great show. Maybe we're going to see that again. They just said to us, last time you found us too easily. This time we're going to make you work a little bit. And I don't mind working for something like a wild dog, that's fine. Okay, let's go, we're just on Philemon's cut line now. Let's just look behind us. No. Okay, so Byron is catching all the updates, which is great on the Game Drive radio. He said something about them going towards Juma Dam. Okay. We'll just we'll go back towards quarantine. This should be a good spot. We're at a sort of a vantage point here, one of the highest points on the property. We might be able to see in between all, all the thick trees, some flashes of white tails darting through the long grass. Not just yet, though. We're still searching. Mm. There's Aubrey. So that's we've all got a similar idea. Maybe we even need to go further. Maybe they could really be past Central. That's how quickly these dogs move and the amount of ground that they can cover in one day is phenomenal. So my most exciting experience with just as to how quickly dogs can can move was, uh, I've had a couple, I'll tell you a Zambian one, but uh, let me tell you the one in the Sabi Sand, the Toulon pack versus the Sand pack uh, were having a bit of a squabble. And they spent the whole morning chasing each other from Lion Sands, Kirkman, Sabi Sabi boundary all the way to the northern boundary of Sabi Sabi and all the way towards, uh, I can't even remember what those properties are called, they're smaller properties, Blondelosi and Sigisa are not too far and they came up and down and did that about 10 times, it was outrageous in the space of a morning safari, it was really really special and then in Zambia, I'll never forget picking up the dogs, picking up guests at Jeki Airstrip, which is in the Lozambezi National Park. And then to camp, it was about a four hour drive through the reserve before we got to the camp that I worked at. That afternoon, the dogs were at our camp. Unbelievable that they'd moved through the heat of the day and it gets hot there too. And got all the way down there. So that was quite spectacular to see that. So they can travel massive distances. Ah. Byron has got a bit more of an update. I think he can give you the latest news. So let's go across to him. Well, I don't know where to even start looking. So one of the other guides said they saw tracks of them heading towards quarantine. We drove around quarantine a few times. No sign of them. I've headed down to the dam and just checking the clearings around here quickly. We'll do a loop back up. Sometimes, and I'm being serious, you can smell the wild dog if they are close. Um, oh, I'm sure I can smell wild dog, yeah. Looks like animals have been running here. And um, they've got a very pungent smell, the wild dog, like a wet dog smell. And you can sometimes smell them very, very clearly. And 
you you'll definitely smell it. What's that? Is that an impala? A lot of impala around here, so that just means they definitely no wild dog here. Well, not right now, at least. These impalas seem very relaxed. As I was saying, if you're following wild dog, you can smell them so clearly. That pungent smell comes off of them. See, the other thing is the wild dogs don't always necessarily just run along the road. They'll run anywhere. They'll just cut straight through the bush if they wanted to. Some of you asked the other day how many kilometers we cover in a game. Our kilometer reading is definitely going to increase today. Increase today. Hang on, what are these? Here we go, yeah, tracks here. Okay, the, yeah, the tracks of the wild dog. They're heading down this road now, and I've just come from there. Aubrey and Taylor, if you copy, um, we've got tracks of these animals coming down from quarantine, heading directly east down towards Twin Dams Road. Just trying to check Twin Dams to see if I can gauge a direction. Affirmative, affirm. Copy. I'm just having a look here, everyone. I'm just trying to have a look now. This is so difficult because I don't know. All those impalas seem very relaxed, but those tracks were coming straight down there. And this substrate, this gr this ground over here, is quite hard. So I'm not sure. I wonder if they didn't just cut straight line. We're swimming along. No, I'm joking. We're driving. <laughs> we're definitely. I don't know why I did that. I just found myself doing that. Uh, so Byron, of course, had those tracks. And again, sorry that we lost him. The gremlins are fighting us. They obviously don't want to see us get those wild dogs, but we won't let that happen, will we, Craig? Oh, hang on, I'm just listening. Right, what we're going to do, we're going to go around central, I think. So Byron said he quickly called in on the radio, you may have heard him, I'm just processing everything in my head. Um, that of course, where's he going? They're going east, straight east. Now I'm trying to think of their routes that they like to go. It means we need to go over the damn wall. And then it means that we're going to have to go central, probably Vulture's Nest, maybe towards Inyala Road North. They like to go through there. They could be, even at this time, because it seems like they're moving quite quickly, they could already be at Buffelsook Dam. We don't actually know. Let's just check. Maybe Batelier Road even, any of those roads, but I think we need to get ahead of them. Ooh, ooh. So you might see me on the dam cam, Craving and I will wave, as we, if we can get through here. Ooh. Very eroded. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm waving to the dam cam as I race across the dam wall. Craig's looking at you as well, so you have to wave back. Okay, let's go. I've got a good feeling. I'm getting this warm feeling inside now. Let's see if we're gonna get lucky. Very quickly. Right. Zoom! 
warm up again. No, we have to can't we can't go too fast because otherwise we we get air and um, we don't want to ramp any of the bumps. Otherwise we'll lose Craig and the camera. And maybe me. Now James, you're wondering if serious disputes ever occur in a wild dog pack? Most certainly, especially when uh, you're getting to that point of changeover. So what will happen is you obviously have a dominant male and female. And I do apologize if I'm not turning around too often. At, at the speed, I do need to concentrate on where I'm driving. So I don't drive off the road or into something. Um, so yes, they, it does happen indeed. Um, so to the point where the, the, the alpha male is starting to get older, there will be a new male... Uh, or, uh, maybe the most oldest male, the strongest male that will start to challenge him to take over that position. And we saw the last time we saw the sand pack, we noticed that the old boy, who is a machine of a wild dog, very tattered, his one eye was completely red, it looked like blood vessels or something had burst into his eye. And that, was, uh, that wasn't really nice. He was also salivating. His lips were quite droopy. I think that he'd been boxing with, with another member in the pack. Because he is getting old now. He's still pretty strong though. So yes, they definitely can. Um, but normally they sort themselves out pretty quickly. None of the animals essentially want to get to the point where they have to kill one another. You've seen it with wild dogs. They rely on working together. It's very important that they've all got a very strong bond. That just helps, of course, the process of hunting and just being able to understand uh, one another. And so, yeah, so things like that happen. It's like a family, really. You know, you have an argument with your brother or sister and... You might not speak for half an hour, but then afterwards you're best mates again. That's the type of thing that will happen in a tight-knit family group with animals too. Bit of disputes, but they put it behind them. I don't think that they hold grudges like we as humans can. Now we're just passing Hyena Road. So I'm also going to keep my eyes out here for any tracks crossing. Mongoose, dwarf mongoose is squeaking again at the back. There are lots of them around today. I haven't seen them though. Just keep hearing them as we drive past. Okay, here's Vulture's Nest. Let's see if there are any tracks here. No. Nothing here. We'll keep going. I think what we're going to do... Oh, I'm just listening to the radio. Okay, so I think we're going to go up in Yala Road North. I think that's going to be our plan. Just listening. Byron is trying to guide Jess and Mike into areas to help us check. So we don't actually care how many vehicles we have in, in the area searching for the wild dogs at the moment. Just as long as one of us finds them. Because we can always cycle through the sighting. But at the moment we don't have the sighting to cycle through. So that's our biggest problem. But we'll give it a bash. We'll go this way and go straight up towards Biffleshook Dam because I think that we are very far behind these dogs now. And every minute that we spend looking for these dogs, it just means that our chances are getting lower and lower of finding them because they could cross out of our traverse and rest. Um, or they could just sit down in a thicket somewhere and we won't have any idea. But I could only imagine they'd be a little bit more active on a nice cool day like today. Now I know, Megan, there are a couple of gremlins along this road, um, especially where we're about to head. Byron before we lose signal, so go ahead and jump back on board with him. All right, now we're still looking. I haven't had any other sign of this wild dog yet. We're checking on the on the opposite side of the drainage line just to see, but here it's very, very thick. So I'm not sure. I'm just take. I'm literally taking a guess now as to where I think they might come out, might start moving around. It's a little frustrating knowing that they have crossed, but um, just not being able to find them. Well, not yet. It's too soon to panic, everyone. <laughs> we might still have some luck. 
Did you bring dog biscuits with you, Senzo? <laughs> Maybe we can get them out with dog biscuits. I highly doubt it. I really have... <laughs> oh, tip of the day. Now, what can the tip of the day be? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, I suppose it's got to be something with the wild dog. Um, if you get animals, alarm calls or anything, the key, the key when you when you are guiding or when you are out in the bush, if you hear an alarm call, if you hear an update or something, try and get into that area as quickly as possible, because animals move as we know, they move very very quickly and can cover a huge distance, especially the wild dogs. So if you do have an update, try and get into that area or try your best to stay with the animals. It's not really a good tip of the day, I suppose. We'll think of something else. Uh, now I'm just trying to think. I'm just going to let Aubrey drive past quickly. Okay, he's going that way. Yeah. See, we've had no tracks coming out this way yet. It doesn't look like it. So I wonder if they didn't head directly south and east, perhaps. See, and that's why it's also so important to know the area that you're working in very carefully because you then know where the next road is, which road to try and take, road to try and take if you're following tracks where the crossing points are that obviously comes with time and experience working in an area but it is crucial especially when following animals now all right well Taylor sounds like she's around twin dams let's find out how it's going down there I've actually moved right out of there. I'm on at the moment. I've just passed Biffleswick Dam and I'm going towards Biffleswick Cut Line. I don't know why, I'm just all of a sudden having a sort of feeling in my belly, my gut, that these dogs have perhaps crossed out already. So I want to check the cut line. I want to check Biffles Hook. Because if Byron only picked up on those tracks, he did, and luckily he did because we haven't found anything. I think. But the distance between where they were and the cut line is not very far, especially if they go straight through the bush. So we're going to jump up here and we're going to go back towards Gauri cut line and then sort of see that way. Because there was nothing, I couldn't see anything from the dam wall. I definitely had a look around. So let's try this. Make sure there's no cars. Very, very important, of course, when you come onto cut lines to make sure that you actually look for other vehicles. I know it sounds silly because those of you who live in cities do it every single day and all the time, but when you're out in the bush, you become quite complacent because the chances of you seeing lots of other vehicles while on drive and people going fast is quite small, but you would not want to, well, end off second base with a big truck, a food delivery truck. Mm, I see another car parked down there, but I wonder if that is not Mike or Jess at Byron sort of um, said to maybe go and wait that side. So maybe they are just standing by, just hanging tight. Nothing just yet though. And you would quite clearly see the dog tracks going across the road too. You would see all the sand being kicked up, especially when, with the pace that they move in. Now, Paul, you've wondered, as we, we're still, still searching, of course, for these dogs, what time of the day do they hunt? Uh, preferably during the middle of the day, so during the heat of the day when most of the other predators other than cheetah are out resting. However, with wild dogs and cheetah, they're not the biggest carnivores out there. And so what they have to do, unfortunately, is try and move in between lions and leopards because if they were to also hunt at night, they're in direct competition with them. So this way, you're alleviating some of that pressure and they can move during the, during the heat of the day. Oh, wow. Just gonna try and pull off the road here. Yeah? Right, I can't go anywhere, sorry Craig, but you can see a beautiful big kudu and he is very relaxed at the moment. He's off to a female behind the bushes. I think he's going to 
do a phlegm and grimace for us. Yes, turn this way, girl, so we can see his expression. Now, I'm going to have to reverse. Oh, no, you're actually all right. Just, of course, that bar that you can see is just from the, the roof that we've got on. What a lovely bull. Not as big as what we have seen, though. But like I said, definitely an indication that the dogs have not passed through here. We would have heard, heard the deep, sort of gruff bark of a kudu very easily. It would have sort of travelled through all the drainage systems. But he is stunning and off he goes behind the thicket. How cool is that? Now in case you are wondering what happened to Brent, we unfortunately lost signal with him. So I'm not sure if he's going to be coming back anytime soon. Hopefully he'll be around again for the sunset safari. Now I'm not going to go racing off because there is another car ahead. So if they do see something, we should be good. But let's have another look at these kudus just in this lovely long grass. There's a whole family here. Oh, just thought I'd heard something, but the only thing that I can hear are the ox peckers. So there must be a couple more kudu off into the distance. You can see that they're also listening out. Some looking towards us and listening. And these guys are great to have around. They definitely alert you. They definitely alert everything around them if they knew something was here. Now you're probably thinking why would kudu alarm for something like wild dogs because wild dogs are much smaller than kudu and not necessarily on the menu. Um, but there are a lot of young kudu around at the, rem at, the rem moment, at the moment. Kudu give birth just after the rainy season. So as we start to come into autumn and I have seen, they're difficult to see, they're hiding in the thicket on the other side of the road. There are a couple of really small ones. And the dogs would come in and harass a herd like this. And eventually try and distract the adults to snatch up a young kudu calf. That's definitely a possibility. And if there was an injured adult kudu too, they might try and take that on. I think we underestimate the strength of animals. Just look at last night's example. Look how strong those hyenas were as they were sort of having a go at that buffalo calf and I've seen footage of a even older buffalo it was a couple of years old being taken down by an entire clan of hyenas so wild dogs are super strong just nipping at the animal constantly causing injury you know getting it at the ankles will definitely weaken it and they would be able to take something down hello girl thank you just standing staring for one last look there are beautiful creatures they must be one of the most magnificent antelope out in Africa I know that there are plenty more and we're now going to see lots more of them with Brent and the rest of the crew when they go up tomorrow but I don't think that anything can beat a kudu one animal that I would love to show you is of course the largest antelope in the world and that's an earlunt that's one of my favorites if you see a big earlunt bull that is a beast of an animal. Um, they are massive. They almost get to, I think the males can get to about oh, between 600 and 800 kilograms, somewhere around there. They're very, very big. Maybe a little bit less than that. Maybe I'm getting a bit too excited. But I feel like I haven't seen a kudu in such a long time. I think we're going to go down in Vubu Road and then go all the way back towards Vuyatela Dam and try our luck. These guys are going to want to have a chat. Are going to want to have a chat with us, just so I, I can find out what's going on. Into Byron's vehicle, the man who found the wild dog tracks, and hopefully, some actual find us some actual wild dogs. Oh, I hope so too, Taylor. But it doesn't look like anything just yet. He's still looking very effectively sure which direction they decided to go to. They could also just have turned around and moved in the opposite direction. See now the interesting thing with um, hang on I just saw uh, no it's just an impala that was running there but why was he running let's just have a look So I think um, I 
I think the problem is what happens is a lot of these animals sorry I'm just turn that radio down for a second so that was just an impala that ran across here um, now the thing with the wild dog is because they're moving around constantly and always trying to hunt and they'll change directions try to run down their prey flush out some of these impala the interesting thing though is that we we might not be able to rely on the alarm calls because often what happens is when the impala run in or the wild dog at least run into a herd of impala there might be one or two alarm calls and those impala run they do not stand an alarm call at the wild dog like they do an um, alarm call at the lion or leopard when they see them sorry I'm just listening Sorry, I'm just listening to an update. It sounds like they want us to check further, further east. Um, so as I was saying, the thing with the wild dog is because the the animals don't stand an, an alarm call at them because they get so nervous, or well, they, they get so worried because the wild dog just run in and hunt. They don't ambush their prey. So animals like leopard and lion, the impala will stand an alarm call at them. So we can then hear where they are. With wild dog it doesn't happen. You don't often hear the alarm calls from animals. Maybe wildebeest, but that's because wildebeest are quite big. They'll stand and they'll alarm call and just kind of congregate in a circle to prevent the dog from getting in. It's about to pass us. So I'm just going to, oh, there we go, I'm just going to have a quick chat to them. Morning everyone, how's Mike? I'm going to rush around quickly. I'm live at the moment, so <laughs> but I'll rush around and then we'll keep you updated. Enjoy everyone, good luck. I don't know if it's good news, but um, Aubrey's just said he also came up in Yala Road North and he had the dogs crossing over our tire tracks. So they're not far, they're going east. So we must have just been ahead of them. We must have been just too far ahead of them. But I think they're going to cross out of Cheetah Cutline. Whether we're going to make it or not, I'm not sure. I'm racing now. It's a nice big open road. We're not too far away. We've just got to go all the way down there. <laughs> okay, that's Hyena Road. Bubblezook Dam is not too far from here, but we're going to keep going straight. Maybe we're going to get them. I think Jess is just a little bit ahead of us, so she'll let us know if she does see any of their tracks crossing out. Let's go. Let's go, go, go. Lots of excitement this morning, of course. I can't believe that. I don't know how far ahead of them we must have been, whether we were just driving and I wasn't looking behind me and they were probably just running on the road after me. Hey, Craig. I think that's what they probably would have been doing. Just to tease us. And this is quite nice. Again, we're higher up, so I'm able to look down. And I don't know why they're using the drainage lines today, which is interesting. I haven't seen the dogs here, well, seen them once using the drainage systems around in Vuba Road and those spots. There's no tracks just yet here. Megan, you're not trying to talk to me, are you? I'm just hearing beeps, but I'm not sure if it's coming from you or from the game drive radio. Not Megan. Oh, okay, just checking. You know what? Oh. Ooh, this is interesting. So, Aubrey's just said the tracks cross central again. They come back, so they, they didn't, they came through and they turned around, going to the south. Hmm, okay, I think we're gonna go down here then. We're gonna go back towards Bufflesook Dam. I think we're gonna have to take Nyala Road again and go back down that same way. 
trying to think Jace because Jace has already gone that way so I don't want to put too many cars going down exactly the same roads if we can sort of just work together and do that army sweep that I was telling you about that would be best now oh, this is bumpy this road is not the greatest road but we will make it hold on Greg <laughs> Woo! now you can imagine being a guest on a vehicle like this would be lots of fun very exciting holding on for dear life as you're driving around racing it's the most exciting thing I used to love looking back when we were chasing after dogs with guests and just see the grins firstly white knuckles from holding on for so tightly but then the smiles on everybody's faces was just it was amazing and I suppose that's one of probably one of the reasons why I miss guiding so much is that instant gratification on people's faces when they see lions for the first time in the wild or elephants or something as rare as wild dogs it was really so amazing and I know all of you are sitting at home seeing a big smiles like this Jess is calling me go Jess Jess, I'm just on this most eastern link road back towards Biffles Hook Dam and um, it will come out quite close to Hippo Pools Road. Okay, copy, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep going. I'm thinking I might just do Nyala Road North back towards Central again. So Jace is going to keep going down Cheetah Cut Line. Bounce, bounce. Which is quite good. Hang on. Why, why are these magpie shrikes going ballistic? No. Some... Hang on. Uh, I don't know where to go. Let's go Hippo Pools Road. They're birds that are going crazy, crazy, crazy. Magpie strikes alarming, it was something else, a woodpecker it's actually sounded like. Whoop, hold on here Craig. Woo! Let's quickly do a little bit of Hippo Pools Road. Let's check that they haven't stopped for a drink. And oh, Wendy behave. Wendy also has the turning circle of a 16 wheeler truck, which is nice. Okay, off we go again. I can hear Byron again. I wonder where Byron's been. Right. Okay, just updating on everything again. We'll keep searching. Now I know this must be hard for you to keep watching, but this bird's going. You can hear them, eh, Craig? Okay, hold on. They're gone, they've gone back south. Aubrey's updating. They did, they, they went on to bat. They went Nyala Road North, Batalia Road. They're going south from there. When, we're going to go along Hippo Pools. Then we're going to go Cheetah Cut Line. And we're going to intercept them. We are going to get these dogs. I'm determined this morning. Whee! Almost there. I'm just going to keep my game drive radio on because Aubrey seems to be spot on with the tracks. And if he can just keep updating, even if he's just behind, then we can use our speed to get in front of those areas unless they do again a sneaky turn and then go back north again, which is possible. And hopefully there's a lot of Impala, a lot of Steenbork and Dacre along Cheetah Cut Line, also a lot of Kudu. Maybe one of those animals will grab the attention of the wild dog and stall them for a little bit. Don't do that. Whee! Craig, are you having fun? Yeah. But your hands are not in the air. <laughs> <laughs> you can only have fun. I only know you're having fun when you sit and you do this. And again, if in case you're all worried that we're being absolutely ridiculous with the way we drive, I can promise you we're really not going that fast. <laughs> it just looks like it. I don't think I've gone over 30, 30 kilometers, maybe 35 k's once this morning. There I was going probably about 25. But on these little windy roads, it's, it's really, really funny. And I wish I could show you, but my speedometer doesn't work. 
But I always used to, because guests would be like, oh my goodness, when you're chasing after dogs, and I'd say, hold on, they go, how, how fast are you going to go? And I'd, I'd drive, and I'd say, look. And they would just sit there completely gobsmacked going, it feels like you're doing 150 kilometers an hour. It's so funny, actually. Okay, safaris are so much fun. I think you all need to try and come on one at least. At least once in your life. It doesn't have to necessarily be to the Sabi sand. It can be anywhere. But just to go on a safari, be on an open vehicle, being exposed by nature, chasing after imaginary wild dogs or dogs that we can't find. It's so exciting and it's all about the experience. Ah, okay, so Byron has now decided I'm going to be the one that looks for the dogs. He's going to look for something else. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm sure he will tell you. Well, I'm still in this area, so if, if we hear any sign or anything, but there are a number of vehicles that are coming in to try and find these wild dogs. I'm still in this area, but we'll see what else we can find. I haven't bumped into anything else yet, so, um, but we'll see what we can find. Um, I'm just going to take it a bit slower now and then just see, maybe we hear some alarm calls, if any, um, or just see animals running around, but we'll see what else we can find. We'll see, but we won't we won't just stop searching because if we do have any tracks, obviously we need to help one another to find these animals and especially something like wild dogs because they don't appear every day. Uh, Michael, you've asked what predators react to a child crying on a vehicle, if, a, if you have an infant crying on the back of a vehicle. Michael, all of them. I've seen all the predators react to it. Um, leopards, leopards lift their heads and look up at the vehicle. Lions, um, a hyena would be so curious anyway, but, but that sound of an infant crying, it's a different sound. It sounds almost like a distress call, and I've seen animals react to it. So they just kind of have a look, which is not ideal. That's why most most lodges, and this this is something important for those of you planning a trip to to Africa. If you want to go on safari, most places don't really allow young children. The age limit is usually around six or seven years old to go, um, uh, yeah, about six or seven years old to go on uh, on the game drive themselves. So that is something to remember if you are planning a trip. It looks like the sun is breaking through a little bit. Earlier I said, oh, it looks like the sun's going to burn off the clouds, and it didn't, but now it does appear as if that is happening, which is good for us. Nice, nice to warm up the day a little bit. It's been a bit chilly. Not that cold, though. And can I tell you, the biggest, biggest problem of all is because of the rain this morning, we're a bit in a bit of a rush we're trying to get the roofs on and get the vehicles ready for, for the safari. So, I do not have my coffee with me, everyone. This morning, no thermos, no coffee. It's a, it's a shame, it's a disappointment. It's the way it happens sometimes. Senzo is very upset with me. He was looking forward to a cup of coffee. He hasn't spoken to me for the past hour. <laughs> oh. Now, Molly, now, I think let, let's just discuss this quickly, just in depth. Um, so, 
a lot of you are asking questions about children on vehicles and on a safari and, and how the animals react to them and, and so on. Now, the, a, an old briefing that we used to do for guests when they came on safari, we, we would say, please, whatever you do, don't stand up because the animals see the vehicle as a whole, um, a, a, as a unit rather, and then if you break up, you break the silhouette of the vehicle and they don't see the people on the vehicle or whatever. That's actually not technically true. I have driven and seen animals look up at people on the vehicle before. They definitely see the people on the vehicle, but they associate us with the vehicle. So that's something that passes by, doesn't harm or, or bother them, so they don't react to it. So they'll just, they're actually afraid of the vehicle, so they move away from the vehicle. So the, but if you do stand up and move around too much, you do stand out more and the animals pick up on that movement. So whenever we have animals moving closer to the vehicles, we always tell the guests, please stay seated. Don't move too quickly. If you're taking photos, move slowly because the animals do react to the movement, which you don't want. Now, with regards to children, it's not necessarily a case of the animals picking up on the scent of a child or anything like that. It's only necessarily, and from what I've seen, it's if, they, if the child is screaming or, or crying or making a noise, moving around, that's when the animals pick up on them. Not if they're just sitting quietly on the vehicle, it'll be fine. It'll just be like another person on the vehicle. But like I said, most lodges... They prefer and recommend that there's an age limit of about six or seven years old for young kids to come on a safari and on the vehicle. There are some in certain places that I think you can take younger children, but to be honest, I don't think the young children really enjoy it as much. And also, it's a long time to be seated on a vehicle, three or four hours in the morning or three or four, or four hours in the afternoon. It's a long time for a young child to stay seated and stay still. So it does become a bit difficult. But again, you can manage the situation, especially if you're a family and you've got the vehicle to yourself. You can do what you want. So you can maybe go out for an hour and return. All depends. All depends on the decision of the family. Um, but like I said, there's generally an age limit of about six or seven, especially in big five areas with most of the lodges, because the animals can react to kids moving around or crying on a vehicle, young children, which you don't want to happen. So I hope that answers all your questions a little bit better. Uh, let's see, I haven't heard anything else, any other updates from the vehicles looking for wild dogs. So, I, I, I wonder, the other thing is, if these wild dogs manage to make a kill, they'll probably be feeding in an area somewhere now, and it could be in a thicket, and then you won't see them for 20 minutes, half an hour, and they won't move around, because they feed very quickly, but they'll stay in that area until they, their kill is finished. So even though we're driving around looking for them, they might not necessarily um, be around. They could be in an area. All right. Sounds like uh, bushwalk is still out. So let's head back to James and find out how his morning's going. I wanted to show you a flower, but Herbert has found something else. What have you found, Herbert? Ah, look at this. Herbert, is that a legless skink? A legless skink. Is that not magnificent? I just don't want it to disappear because it will burrow its way into the ground very quickly. Isn't that amazing? And it's got a very sharp tip to its nose for burrowing. Oh, wow. It's, it, it almost looks like it's steel-tipped. Dave, if you come up here, you can see that the, the nose looks like it's got a sort of steel tip to it. Oh, sore, 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 sore. Don't be scared. You see that? Looks like it's been reinforced with steel. Let's see where it goes.
I suspect it will have a burrow in here. I thought maybe Herbert had found Shungile, but he found this thing, which is now digging its way. See it dig, trying to dig there, David? It's just sort of making its way up into the bouchets there. There. there there's its hole. See? Can you see where the, my stick is? Yeah. And you can see where the ground is moving. Yeah. That's where it's moved. Mm. Very cool. Very cool. Alrighty, we're going to continue up the road. Um, I'll just quickly show you this flower and I'll tell you about it next time. It smells disgusting. It is of uh, Gymnosporia buxifolia, but Taylor, before they disappear, has got some wonderful elephants. He is going to disappear, I'm afraid. He's a very cheeky young teenager at the moment who is off on his own mission and he's trying to throw a couple of branches at us. He's also shaking his head at me and flared his ears out at me. He is very rude this morning. Very, very, very rude. But now he's disappearing off and down and into the thicket. But you can just see how thick the vegetation is. Now, I don't know if he's tailing a breeding herd or what his story is. He's all on his own. So I reckon he's only just recently um, been pushed out. Let me see if I can angle the car a little bit better. But it is quite tough. Uh, and just remember we don't off-road for elephants, we let them be, but we might be able to stick with them for a little bit longer. He seems to have settled down now. Now I'm not even shocked or surprised that the elephant behaved the way he did towards me and I think one of the reasons why is because we have a roof on this morning and I think he's just gone, I'm irritated, I'm annoyed and oh, what is that strange thing on top of your head? Now I'm even more angry and annoyed and that's what he did. So then he started throwing the branches at us and it was really quite funny of course and all I did was I just reprimanded him, I raised my voice to him and, <laughs> and then he settled down. Now he's walked off, he's probably sulking. I wouldn't blame him for sulking. It must be really hard to have your whole whole family turn against you. Uh, just a quick update, of course, on the wild dogs. We haven't had any of the tracks coming out this way. I'm on Ledwood Road at the moment, so I think that these dogs are having a sleep somewhere. I think they've probably had a busy morning and have sat down on a drainage line somewhere near um, Inyala Road, between Inyala Road, North Central, Batalia, Vulture's Nest, that entire Mulwati system and all its uh, little crevices that are in there, they're very difficult for us to drive and there are not too many roads around there either. So we'll have to wait and maybe for this afternoon safari we're going to get wild dogs. I don't actually want to go home, I just want to keep driving around until we find them. But yeah, that was quite nice and good to see an elephant. How great was that? I'm very happy about that. It was a quick view of one, but an elephant nonetheless. And every day that I see an elephant, I'm very, very happy. Hopefully he settles down and he's not so grumpy for the rest of the day. <laughs> there are my favorite young elephant bulls and young elephant cows that are about 10 years old. Also seem to be quite temperamental too. <laughs> so that was lots of fun. I definitely had Craig and I chuckling for a couple of minutes. Right, let's go through here. Now, I'm not sure what else we're going to see this morning, but we're going to go back towards Twin Dams now. We'll, we'll be passing Twin Dams. I think we'll take Shibamu Road home and start making our way back towards a quarantine to see. Maybe we can pop past the wildebeest, our dear friends, the wildebeest, who we very quickly saw on the pre-show this morning and then they went running off. But I'm not sure if all the animals are still going to be around and up on quarantine because if those wild dogs did go through there, which they clearly did because Byron had all of their tracks, uh, they probably would have gone and scattered everywhere. But maybe it's been some time since they were there, so who knows, they could come back together again and all be out on the nice open plains enjoying the morning sun. It's a bit windy still today. Let's just check here at Baboon Pan very quickly. Now that it's light, but I didn't see any tracks this morning. I didn't can't see anything up in the tops of the tree. She'll take Shibamo. Oh my goodness! Ooh. Absolutely flown by. All right. To Byron.
Aaron and see, see what he's doing and see if he's ready. Uh, well, we haven't managed to find anything else yet. I'm heading back in the direction of Vuyatella Dam. I always get confused. Everyone's got a different name for it. Is it Juma Dam, Vuyatella Dam, Gauri Dam? I don't know what it, what it is. What the uh, main, main lodge dam? <laughs> I think Juma Dam is on Cheetah Plains. So this one is Vuyatella Dam. But uh, then I've heard other people call it Gauri Dam. So, uh, I don't know. We're going to the dam in front of the camp. <laughs> Sensor. Uh, who knows? Maybe the wild dog decides to come visit us there. <coughs> exciting morning, though. Very exciting morning. Always exciting to hear predators coming through and trying to find them and. Even if we don't, we had tracks of them though, so who knows, they could pop out later. Is that a fish eagle? I think it is. Ah, lovely. Can you see from there? There we go. Beautiful fish eagle. At the dam in front of the camp. <laughs> I love seeing these fish eagles around. One of my favorite eagles. Would be wonderful to watch it actually fishing. White Lady Owen, you'd like to know what my favorite bird call is that I have out here. Now, it's tricky. I do enjoy hearing the fish eagle calls. Um, I, I must admit, I think the nocturnal calls... Uh, I'm just trying to think. Sorry, just hold on a second. I thought I could hear some alarm calls in the distance. So White Lady Irwin, uh, my favorite bird calls, one would be the Black Crown Chagra. Uh, now let me just play that one for you quickly, just to give you an idea of, of what I mean. Black Crown Chagra, there we go, let's see. Very melodious whistle. So I do enjoy hearing that call. What Lady Irwin, so I'll get back to that now. I can just hear Baboon's alarm calling. It sounds like coming from quarantine. Let's go and have a look around there quickly. Um, and I'm not sure if we're going to chase this fish eagle if I do. Just gonna drive past slowly, hopefully it stays there. Beautiful. Oh, it is really beautiful. I'd love to stay and watch it however. These baboons are alarm calling everyone. I think let's go have a look and just see what they're alarm calling at. Um, and but uh, I think you are still seeing it on the dam cam, so you can still see that beautiful fish eagle sitting up there. And um, that's the closest I think I've ever got to a fish, got to a fish eagle. And again, I feel like these eagles have been put to the test today. Test today, with us racing around a little bit. Some very relaxed impala here. Um, so
so uh, White Lady Erwin, getting back to your question of the favorite bird calls, a lot of the nocturnal calls are my favorite. So the uh, fiery necked nightjar. Uh, no, wait, let's see if I can do it. <laughs> sound something like that but it's just so nice hearing those calls at night very very nice nocturnal calls hold on everyone I'm just gonna switch off here for a second let's just hear where these baboons are alarm calling let's see if we can hear them again gone quiet no I can't hear anything All right well I'm just gonna check around this area quickly James has something interesting apparently that he'd like to show you The most interesting thing about what I'm holding here is it's quite gargantuan size. This, everybody, is the dung of an elephant. It is very large. It's bigger than my head. Not as big as my ego mind, but as big as my head. Yes. Um, <laughs> and I'm, look, we've broken these things up endlessly together and seen what's in them but I just thought this one was so very large and possibly related uh, or came out of the elephant that Taylor saw earlier or maybe the elephant actually you know where this was this is from yesterday I think this is the one that Connor had yesterday that very big bull that eventually walked down the western fringes of quarantine yesterday afternoon a very large piece of dung now I believe you've been talking about your favorite night calls uh, um, and I was uh, asked to share what my favorite night call is. I I don't know. I think my favorite night call is probably the as common as it is. I think the common call is the um, the uh, what is it? The fiery neck night jar. That would be my favorite night call. But uh, I mean, I've, I've shared with you very often my favorite day call. So I'm not going to do that again. But I, what I will do is say that my second favorite bird that calls during the day is over here somewhere. And there are two of them, and they are the southern boo boo. And they go. The one goes, and the other goes. Makes me think of Christmas holidays. That won't happen again, of course, for the next seven months, but that's just how it goes every year. Now, I want to find that plant again that I found for you earlier, the Gymnosporia buxifolia, or the common spike thorn, uh, which is now starting to flower. And the flowers are disgusting. They smell like um, really powerful mothballs mixed in with dirty feet. Now, mothballs mixed with dirty feet, as you can imagine, is a foul smell indeed. And we don't really know why, but perhaps it is uh, pollinated by some sort of carrion-eating fly. Unfortunately, although they are one of the most common trees you find out here, I am currently unable to find one. Here we go. Here's one. Here is Gymnosporia buxifolia. This one, naturally enough, David, is what? Mm. Not flowering. Mm. How very disappointing. Let's just go around it quickly. It's normally the red spike thorns that smell even worse. The Gymnosporia senegalensis. But I can't see any smell... I can't see any smelly white flowers here. Sorry about that everybody, never mind. Let's continue. We're not too far from home at the moment and there was a really nice herd of impala mixed in with some nyalas not too far from here. Did you see them, David? They were just in amongst the guari bushes here. There they are, they're watching us. They're wildebeest actually, they're not nyala. Wildebeest and impala. 
making their way sort of probably into suboptimal terrain for them. One of them's lying down. Probably, uh, you know, maybe trying to get out of the wind. Maybe that's why they're not on the clearings at the moment. There is a bit of a wind, but I've got to tell you, the temperature is very pleasant. It hasn't been cold at all today. So some strange early winter weather that we're having. Let's sneak a little bit closer. David, of course, looks a little bit like a sort of badly dressed superhero because he's got the rain cover on the back of the backpack and it looks like a sort of poor cape. I'm just going to walk slowly towards them and see if we can't get a nice view. And all the while I shall look around for the stinky flowers of Gymnosporia buxifolia or the common spike thorn. There we go. Hello traps. How's your morning? There's one of the bully boys of the Impala world. A young or an adult male who's no doubt been singing a very unattractive song to his mates, potential mates, during the course of the morning. It's not a really nice serenade that they give, is it, David? No. I have found that uh, singing like that at a woman does not work at all. Byron, I'm not sure. Byron's singing is somewhat like that, actually. And so what I should, I'm going to suggest is that as I hand you over to him, you ask him to sing like that to Taylor. Give Taylor a serenade, Byron. Oh dear, Megan, I do apologize, but I'm struggling to hear you. Where are you? You there? I'm struggling to hear you a little bit. Um, so I couldn't hear what James was mumbling about. Um, <laughs> but Taylor and I thought we'd have a quick discussion about some of our favorite bird calls. And um, I mentioned another one is a emerald cuckoo. Hi, Taylor. Um, would you like to... So now then there's a big debate going on on what it actually says. Quickly go with your... Okay. Very clear. I know what it is saying. Taylor, what do you think it I says? I think it's saying, hello, Georgie. And Byron, of course, disagrees with That's me. completely wrong. It's called, it is saying, pretty Georgie. <whistles> there we go. You see, pretty Georgie. Uh, anyway, that's enough of that. Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> Batman. Those of you who haven't seen Batman before, there he is. Hi, Batman. <laughs> We're not saying he is Batman, we're just saying that we've never seen Craig and Batman in the same room at the same time. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> now, that the show is just about to end. It was an exciting show. Almost had wild dogs very close. They might still be on the property somewhere. So we are definitely going to... Have a look around this afternoon. Try search for leopards again, lions, but anything, anything that we find. And we've, James had some interesting little things this morning. Some wonderful birds. Maybe we do some more birding this afternoon. We'll see, whatever pops up. It's quite a cool day at the moment. So I do think we might still get a lot of movement from the predators. Um, so who knows what the afternoon holds for us. Maybe some elephant arrive. But um, it has been fun. Luckily it stopped raining. We're probably going to take the roofs off this afternoon. I don't think we'll need them. But um, I think a big goodbye and thank you from James and Taylor. And of course the final control. Thank you ladies and the final control. The voices in my head. But um, I think especially a big thank you to all of you. All your questions, all your comments, it's always nice hearing from you. And um, we hope you've all enjoyed this morning's drive, this morning's safari. Sunrise safari without a real sunrise. But we'll see you this afternoon, same time. And we will see what we can find. 
Thank you very much again, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Good start to the week, wherever you are around the world. We'll see you all later. Goodbye.